Preparations are underway for a march for humanity. Monday's march is going to start at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church and end at Morehouse College. It's expected to follow the same procession route taken thousands of go years ago, rather, 50 years ago, when Dr. Martin Luther King's body was moved to Morehouse for a college for a public service there. In the days after Dr. King's death, violence broke out across the country. But as Channel 2's Justin Wilfon reports, that was not the case in Atlanta. Throughout his life, Martin Luther King Jr. preached a message of nonviolence. I cannot believe in violence because I think it creates many more social problems than it solves. In the days after his death, his hometown followed his advice. It went unusually well. And I think uh, the building up of our working together as community and police was simply the answer. When King died, former Atlanta police chief Eldrin Bell was a young detective on the force. He told me while other cities across the country saw riots, APD worked hard to keep Atlanta calm. We cannot afford to allow his um, home to be destroyed, as many other homes were being destroyed around the country. While APD officers stepped up patrols, the department also reached out to community leaders, including presidents of local colleges, to encourage them to help spread King's message of nonviolence. Yeah, along with it being excellent police work in knowing what to do uh, proactively, we were able to uh, keep the peace. But things weren't so peaceful at the state capitol, where Georgia's white segregationist governor, Lester Maddox, didn't like the outpouring of support for King following his death. He came unhinged in the aftermath of King's death. Uh, he was terrified. And he, uh, he shuttered himself in the mansion for a while. Frederick Allen, the author of Atlanta Rising, told me Maddox became furious when he saw the flags at the Capitol lowered to half staff in King's honor. And Maddox started to go outside and raise the state flags uh, by himself. And he saw news crews, and some little voice told him it wouldn't be a good idea. While there were clearly some exceptions in those somber days following King's death, the city, too busy to hate, never found the time. It's not the greatness of the police, nor the greatness of the community, but the coming together to make sure that his community was not destroyed during this time was certainly uh, a uh, yeoman's place for us to be. And again, more people will come together on Monday for the, uh, the next march. Also, in the days following King's death, the president of Coca-Cola, Robert Woodruff, called the city and offered a blank check for anything the city might need. Astounding, and it's a wonderful part of Atlanta's history to keep it together.